So this video, let's uh, take a little step back from the code that we've been writing and uh, begin again with a um, just a cross-platform Sprite Kit project. And we're not going to do any coding in here, but I think it is worth um, taking a look at for you guys, and you'll get maybe a little deeper understanding of um, uh, you know the, kind of the larger world of Sprite Kit here. So we're going to choose a uh, a cross-platform Sprite Kit game. You can see that that's the option under uh, cross-platform. Hit next, and we'll just call this cross. Platform. All right. Okay. And put it probably in one of the worst places possible, the desktop. Um, I didn't. I tend to throw everything away the, on the desktop at once. <laughs> I could easily toss this. All right. So you'll notice uh, when we open this up that uh, under our general settings, uh, we've now got all these targets over here for iOS, uh, Watch OS app, Watch OS extension, TV OS, and uh, and even Mac OS. And um, if you wanted to do just like a quick, uh, you know, test build of all these different targets, you can uh, toggle this and you can see now you can pick uh, tvOS, macOS and, and basically run these in those simulators uh, for those particular devices. Just be sure you pick, you know, something down here, not a generic tvOS device. You, know, you got to choose one of the actual simulators. Um, and uh, I, so... We don't need to do that though. I mean, you can pause the video and do it on your own time. Uh, and of course, you got your general settings for each one of these particular targets over here. And uh, uh, what I think is kind of the thing that's worth most noting is that um, you do have shared code uh, between these. So you've got, you've still got your game scene.sks file, the one that you're working with before, and your game scene.swift uh, file, which now just has some um, if statements in here that are only going to run on on particular um, kind of device families. So you can see that you've got OS, watch OS, right? Um, else, so if it's not a watch OS, then this block of code runs over here, right? And you, you've got that in a couple places. So if iOS or if it's tvOS, then you do this touch-based handling, which I know you're not actually touching your TV, but still. Um, and then, of course, your uh, OS X, you know, just uh, the Mac OS here. So this is obviously code to deal with the mouse, right? Uh, so this is kind of neat, uh, just in the, you know, in the sense that uh, you know you can you can still put all the, your your code in you know uh, one file. Um, and uh, and have it uh, you know spread across those uh, different devices. And if you're kind of curious how uh, how you would uh, create a file that is going to be um, built with all of those various targets. You could just go over here and make a new file and uh, let's just look for just a new Swift file here. There we go. So we'll just call it uh, some code. And the important part here is actually getting cut off. There it is. So what you'd want to do is uh, click off all the different targets that you want this file to be shared among, right? So we could go over here and uh, do tvOS, macOS, but let's say let's leave it off the um, the watch OS. And, probably putting a space there is not a good idea. So let's go ahead and uh, click create. And you can see it's um, because I had, I was kind of previously selecting something inside of this shared folder. It, um, it just created the file and put it inside of there. It could have easily put it in one of these other ones if I was, you know, um, if I had one of those selected. Uh, but you can move all these files around. This, that really has uh, no bearing on, on where it gets published. So I could just drag this, put it in one of these other uh, folders. And, it, and these are actually just really not folders at all. You, there's no folder inside of your finder, um, inside of you know where this project is saved. These are essentially just groups. So it's just something internal to Xcode to help you kind of organize things. Um, and at any time, if you want to see where this ends up, you can go to show, show and find it, right? Uh, but uh, so let's let's take a look at where uh, that X where it does matter, right? So go back over here to your uh, your, your general tab, or get over here to general, and then what you want to do is look over into in build phases, and occasionally this gets a little compressed here. Let's see if we can. What I'm trying to show you guys is that. Well, let's see. Well, I don't know exactly what I did, but uh, somehow I got it back open again. Whoever wrote the code for this needs to be taken out back. All right, so uh, so that, now you can see the uh, you know, the various targets again. And uh, what we want to do is go over here to build phases. And if you start unfolding these things, you'll you'll see some of your same files over here. And and this is where clicking off on those targets really matters. Okay, so you can see that that file that I just created, some code.swift, is here in the compile sources for iOS. 
It's over here in tvOS and macOS, but remember, I didn't check it off for the watchOS, and obviously, it's 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 not in there. Uh, and um, you could change that at any time. So you could go over here and say, okay, well, actually, you know what? I meant to put that in there, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. And again, do the same thing over, uh, let's see. Copy the uh, Well, whatever. Um, point is, that that's how you do it. And... Uh, and then you'll notice too, let's fold these back up, under your uh, copy bundle resources, this is where uh, your other things like your uh, your SKS files, your action file over here, it's still an SKS type, uh, your assets, that's where all those guys end up. And if you did, um, if you did uh, just dump files, like image files into just kind of your main little you know media area over here. Uh, those would end up um, as individual files inside of here. Uh, but you can see that the nice thing about having you know actually including them inside of the assets catalog is basically the entire assets catalog gets kind of put in your as there it goes it's gone again uh, in your resources as kind of just you know one kind of lump sum thing. Um, and I and generally speaking, I, I would just recommend you you know you put stuff into your assets catalog. And uh, and uh, yeah, let's see if there's really uh, anything more notable to talk about. Um, when I was kind of previewing this a moment ago, I uh, I was looking at the basically the interface storyboard for the watch. And obviously the watch is, is the, you know, the thing out of all of these different uh, platforms that's uh, the, it's kind of the most different, I would say. Um, and, you, and you can see that, uh, you've, so, you know, with the watch, if you've never worked with SpriteKit and, and the watch before, but you have used a watch, you're probably, you know, familiar with setting up everything in your storyboards and things like that. Um, whereas uh, now in this template, you can see that you've got your SpriteKit um, scene over here, which was probably just dragged out when they created it from over here. And uh, basically the connection with everything else over here it has to do with, okay, so this is the, the class is this WK interface SK scene class, which <clears throat> is, um, yeah, let's just connect it over here, interface controller. All right, so interface controller. So if you were to go back over to, all right, so you, there's the Swift file for that. And then you can see that um, this WK interface controller file, or view basically is a uh, view controller, is really just, you know, when it wakes up, it just goes let scene equals game scene dot uh, new game scene, which is called inside of your game scene dot uh, Swift file. See, there it is, uh, new game scene which again, kind of gets the whole party started for your game scene file and uh, creates a SK scene out of uh, you know, your, your .sks file over that way. So um, that was the only thing that I kind of know. I was like, wait a minute, how does that work again? Uh, and, then, uh, and then TVOS, you know, kind of same deal. You know, here's your game view controller, which we saw in the, the previous videos. Uh, so nothing spectacularly different over there. And uh, same thing is true on uh, on this end. So yeah, all roads basically lead back to just working with a .swift file and a uh, scene file, which is quite convenient for us. And um, of course, you, you guys will probably notice that um, now in this game scene.sks file, the uh, the stage is set up a little bit differently than it was before in the, um, in the iOS template. Obviously we had a, a kind of a portrait um, layout uh, for it. This one is kind of like a, what is it? It's obviously not a landscape mode iPhone, which is has the same ratio as the as the TV. Uh, let's see if we can look at, yeah, 30, what is that, right? It looks like it's basically a, um, maybe an iPad Pro on its side, maybe. The 1024 is what makes me think that. But, um, you know, a lot of times when you're working with SpriteKit, you're, you're uh, just thinking in terms of a very flexible, um, stage area anyway so you know when you're um when you're programming things or laying things out you want to sort of be thinking like okay is this in the middle um you know and i'll show you guys how to kind of basically uh, get the programmably set things to be in the exact uh you know middle of the width the height things like that um but uh that's not going to be this video let's talk about that uh, at another time but hopefully now you guys got a kind of a sense of uh uh, working with the uh, cross-platform template.